Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be discussing what rocks are. So in previous videos, we've talked a lot about minerals and the building blocks of rocks and sort of the ingredients of rocks. Um, but now we're going to be discussing rocks themselves. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about what rocks are um, and the rock cycle and how different the three main different types of rocks relate to one another and how they can transform into one another. All right, so let's talk about what a rock is exactly. By definition, a rock has to be coherent. It has to be something that could be broken apart with a little bit of effort, um, but it's solid and it, it sticks together. Um, it has to be naturally occurring. Um, so something like concrete, although it might look like a rock, isn't by definition a, a rock because it's not naturally occurring. Um, bricks, for example, and cinder blocks, those also wouldn't count as, as rocks either. Um, Rocks have to be an aggregate of minerals or um, a body of glass. So those are the only things that count as a rock. So um, an aggregate of minerals. So you can see in this picture here on the left of the screen, um, we have a number of samples of igneous rocks. Um, these are um, igneous rocks that are coarse grained. So you can see the mineral grains within these rocks. Um, you can sort of pick out different colors. We have, um, you know, dark black minerals in here, white minerals. There are some um, translucent or gold minerals in here as well. Um, and in some of these, we have like a salmon-y pink color. So um, you can tell that these are made up of many different minerals. They're an aggregate of minerals. Um, something that is a body of glass would also be considered um, a, a rock as well. Um, they have to consist of many grains or crystals. Let's talk about grains versus crystals. Um, there is a little bit of confusion sometimes of whether to use the term grains or whether to use the term crystals. So grains generally, it, it's, a, it's a more general term than crystal. Um, you can use the term grain to describe um, any crystal or fragment of a crystal or glass um, that can be within a rock. So we can look at the sandstone here on the left that is made up of grains of sand so you can imagine that you're walking on a beach and there are little tiny grains of sand everywhere eventually those can get compacted and cemented together to form a sandstone so this is what we would call grains um, you can also use the term grain to describe uh, mineral grains or pieces of minerals um, that are in place or in situ. Um, the term in situ uh, is of Latin origin and it means um, in place. Uh, and it's a, it's a word that geologists frequently use to describe um, a rock or mineral that is in its original place. So these minerals here in this granite, they formed uh, where they are now. They formed, um, you know, together in that orientation and they haven't moved relative to run one another. Um, so the term grain is more general. You can use it to describe things like grains of sand in a sandstone, as well as grains of minerals within something like an igneous rock. The word crystal, on the other hand, is a little bit more specific, and we use that to refer to a mineral that formed um, in its present shape. So it hasn't been, that mineral hasn't uh, experienced any weathering, it hasn't been ground up over time and then repurposed into a new rock. Um, a crystal specifically uh, refers to something in its present shape. Okay, so let's talk about the three main rock types. So these might be things that you're already familiar with, something that maybe you were exposed to in a previous class, um, but let's just review them um, really quickly. So the three main rock types that you're going to encounter um, if you're um, out in the world exploring um, would be an igneous rock, a sedimentary rock, or a metamorphic rock. So igneous rocks, um, which we will um, cover in more detail in another video. Igneous rocks, they form um, when hot molten rock, um, either magma or lava, cools and freezes solid. Um, the word freeze uh, might imply that the temperature is really low, like zero degrees Celsius, so 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but what we mean when we say freeze is that that, uh, that magma or lava has just solidified. 
Um, so don't get confused when I say the word freeze. The temperatures are much higher when a rock freezes, um, but it's, it's not, um, you know, the same temperature that water freezes at. Anyhow, um, that's what an igneous rock is. It forms when molten rock cools and freezes solid. Um, magma is the term that we use to describe uh, molten rock that is below the surface of the earth. And lava is just what we call it when it reaches the surface of the earth. So um, any molten rock that um, erupts out of a volcano, we would call lava. Um, and any anything that is still under the surface of the earth, we would call a magma. So I just want to differentiate between the two of those. Um, on the left of the screen here, you can see uh, this igneous rock here that is actively forming in Hawaii. Um, that is an active volcano, and there there is lava that has extruded out of the earth and um, is cooling and crystallizing um, at the surface. Let's talk about sedimentary rocks now. So sedimentary rocks, they form either by cementing together fragments um, broken off by pre-existing rock or by the precipitation of mineral crystals out of water solution um, when the rock is at or near Earth's surface. So um, you might have encountered something like a sandstone in the past. That's a really good example of a sedimentary rock. Um, and that is basically a, a bunch of uh, pre-existing rock, pre-existing um, sand grains that have now been cemented together, uh, either by quartz or some other mineral that is helping it stick together. Um, you can also have things dissolved in water. Um, quartz can be dissolved in water at high temperatures, um, and calcite can be dissolved uh, in water at high temperatures. So once that water leaves the system, it can leave behind um, quartz and calcite in the pore spaces and cement uh, those grains together. Finally, we have metamorphic rocks. So those form when you have pre-existing rocks. So either an igneous rock, a sedimentary rock, or a metamorphic rock, um, you have a pre-existing rock that has been reheated or put under higher pressures. Um, so you can think of the word metamorphism like a butterfly. It's, uh, it's like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. It's one rock that's being transformed into a new kind of rock. Um, that's what we call a metamorphic rock, something that was pre-existing but has now evolved into something slightly different. You can take any rock and metamorphose it. You can take an igneous rock, metamorphose it, sedimentary metamorphose it. You can also take a metamorphic rock and re-metamorphize, metamorphose it. Um, anyway, um, let's talk a little bit about um, the rock cycle. So um, I was just sort of delving into this a little bit, but this is a really excellent uh, diagram of the rock cycle because I really feel like it encapsulates all of the possibilities of the rock cycle. The rock cycle isn't just uh, unidirectional. It doesn't go just one way. You don't go just from igneous to sedimentary to metamorphic and around and around. Um, but these three rock types um, can all relate to one another and they can all be transformed into one another by different processes. So let's start here with um, sedimentary rocks, for example. So we know that um, if we take a sedimentary rock and we put it under um, pressure and heat, that it can be metamorphosed. It can be turned into a metamorphic rock. Igneous rocks as well can be buried and heated and turned into a metamorphic rock. So I feel like this really illustrates um, that all types of rocks can be metamorphosed. Metamorphic rock here, it illustrates that it can be buried, heated, and re-metamorphosed. So I think that's a really excellent um, illustration of those processes. So igneous rocks, they can be eroded, transported, and deposited and turned into sedimentary rocks. Um, they can also be heated and remelted. You can have an igneous rock that then gets reheated and melted back into magma. Um, so these rocks are constantly being recycled. And this is one of the reasons why we don't find very many examples of really old rocks on Earth. The majority of rocks um, that make up Earth's crust, um, vast majority are very young. Uh, we do have examples of old rocks, like we talked about in a previous video. We have rocks that, you know, date at 4.5 billion years old. Um, but vast majority of them are young because of the rock cycle, because they're constantly being recycled and turned into something new. 
Um, metamorphic rocks can also be eroded, transported, and deposited into sedimentary rocks. Um, and sedimentary rocks can be eroded, transported, transported, and redeposited and turned into different sedimentary rocks. Um, so I think this is a really excellent diagram because it really encapsulates all of the options in the rock cycle, and it doesn't uh, and it doesn't uh, falsely illustrate that it's just one cycle, one unidirectional cycle. Anyway, I hope that this video was helpful in giving you an overview of what rocks are and the three main types of rocks and how they relate to one another. Um, just keep in mind that rocks can always be recycled and turned into something new. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.